Hello everyone, welcome to Prime Cut, Default Prime's weekly video game news roundup. I'm your host as usual, Steven Snake Yuka Lindsay, and on this week's episode, we're going to be talking about Dark Souls coming to PC. Also, we're going to reveal and talk about Capcom's Captivate trailers. Also, we have news on an unannounced Gears of War game being cancelled. And lastly, we're going to talk about the Shadowrun Returns Kickstarter. But without further ado, let's get right into this week's episode. Last year, Atlas announced that they would be extending their servers for Demon's Souls. But that won't be the case this year around. On May 31st, Demon's Souls server will be shutting down meaning that no longer will you get all the many features that you were getting with Demon's Souls that made it quite unique, such as no longer will you have messages left by other players, the bloodstains from other players that died, the ability to have other players come in and help you out if you needed a hand with a boss, and no longer will you have to worry about people invading your world and killing you because you suck at PvP like I do. As a kind of ship-off for the online portion of the game, they're having two World Tennessee events next month, which will be up to the fans to decide. These events will run from May 1st to 15th, and 16th to 31st. I guess this is the time for one to pick up Demon's Souls again, and have one last playthrough. Now as a note, if you still haven't picked up this game, you'll still be able to play the game, as there's the offline single player, but you won't get the full effect that many of us other players have experienced over the years. There's been some rumors around, and even a leaked scan from a magazine, that Dark Souls would be coming to PC, and it would be called Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. We now have a trailer for the PC version. This trailer shows off a few of the new bosses and creatures that you'll be facing, as well as a little bit of the new areas. This version is also slated to include new equipment, new NPCs, a PvP matchmaking option, and much, much more to be revealed at a later date. While this is good news that those that have been holding out on the game, perhaps even for a PC release, have the ability to play it on their PC now, but we early adapters who got it on the console, right now there's no clue if we'll even get to see this extra content through DLC or a patch or not. Hopefully we will, as I'm sure several people out there would be willing to pay for such extra content. I sure would. Anyways, you'll be able to get the PC version on August 24th. If one was to talk about RPGs on the PlayStation 1 with me, I'd probably bring up and talk about Legend of Legea, and everyone would be confused. But surely someone would bring up Legend of Dragoon. It wasn't the highest praised game or even so the best, but it has a certain spot in several people's hearts. But not everyone had the opportunity to play it. Now there's a new opportunity upcoming to finally play the game for the first time, or at least replay the game without having to break out the old console, and you'll be able to get it on the PSN on May 1st. Tekken Tag 2 has been out in arcades for a bit, but now you'll be able to play it on your consoles. Well, the Xbox 360 and PS, we wouldn't be able to handle it. Also, this might be your first time playing it due to arcades not being very popular over here anymore. Currently, there's not much revealed about what the console version will bring to it, but we do know so far that there will be 44 characters, which is more for the console version than the arcade. There will be something called a Fight Lab, and there will be online play, which is kind of expected for fighters nowadays. Also, we do know that this will be coming out in September, which means it'll be going against Dead or Alive 5. I'm not sure that's the best idea. Or maybe it could work out for them in their favor. I have no idea. For other news on the console version, we'll have to wait till E3 sadly. So stay tuned here for more info as we get it. If you're like me, you were or are a big fan of Dragon Ball Z because you grew up with it on Toonami. As a child, perhaps you went as far as pretending you were one of your favorite characters. You know, doing spirit bombs, tri beams, destructo disc, and the ever popular Kami Hami Ha. Now that Dragon Ball Z is coming to the Kinect, you can actually finalize your childhood dreams of doing all of those moves. Then again, I have a green screen uh, camera 
and slight video editing abilities. So that means I could simply been doing that all this time. I think of doing that earlier that was so cool and so bad at the same time anyways for the game it will feature 100 moves 50 characters and interactive cutscenes apparently you'll also be able to get more characters in that 50 by simply getting some QR codes let's just see how that part plays out lastly the game will be coming out in October so it's a great time to practice all of that yelling on PlayStation's Facebook page, a picture has been posted with the question, Will Vengeance Bring Redemption for 1912? This has led many to believe that this announcement will be for God of War 4. But to me and others, the image doesn't look too God of War-ish to me. But perhaps that's the point of it, to get us off the case. But now, if that is the case, and it isn't God of War 4, what could be a game involving vengeance where the character is doing it for redemption? Finally, we get some real gameplay for Medal of Honor Warfighter. Though it's kind of a scatter type with a lot of moments that appear to be more or less showing scripted events with in-game graphics and maybe a few that have actual gameplay. But truth be told, I don't have a lot to say about this trailer. You know, there's explosions, close-ups of people, and some occasional shootings. Anyways, you can get your new Medal of Honor on October 23rd. Crossover games seem to be the craze as of late. It's like fanfiction going wild. A new one has just been announced called Project Cross Zone, which will be a crossover between Capcom, Namco Bandai, and Sega. That sure is a weird mix and match. The game has been called similar to Namco Cross Capcom, which was only released in Japan, which, in fact, is what some people are saying Project Cross Zone might end up being as well. Then again, from the screenshot shown, the game appears to be having a gameplay style similar to Cross Edge, which was released over here, though the game wasn't well received. Then again, that was due to a lot of issues with the game that definitely should have been improved. So perhaps if Project Cross Zone comes over here, those problems won't be as bad. One Piece is a very popular anime series that over here in America has gotten some mixed reception depending on what company did the dubbing. There was the 4 kids one, which people really didn't like because it was kind of toned down for kids. Like a lot. But then there's the Funimation one, which was well received. And now we have news that One Piece Pirate Warriors will be coming to the West in November. With that news, some people are wondering if some of the content in the game will end up being cut to make it a little more kid friendly, like say how Kinda of Poor Kids did, or perhaps they'll have all the original content and be uncut. We'll only know for sure once we get our hands on the game for PS3 later this year. It was just a while back that we first heard about Resident Evil 6, and I, along with others, theorized about certain elements in the game, and primarily, about who some of those characters are. Two that people were wondering about have been clarified now, as in they clearly told us who they were. See, that's Sherry from Resident Evil 2, and not Ashley like some of us thought, like I did. And that guy right there happens to be Wesker's son. Now there's another woman revealed, and people are trying to figure out who she is. Some people believe it's Ada, but I definitely don't see that. Other pieces of info revealed is that the new virus is being called the Seed Virus, and Leon and Chris will have a small confrontation. Oh, and for those that don't know, the release date of the game has been moved from November to October, which means they'll be facing off against Bioshock Infinite in Assassin's Creed 3. Now let's just hope that Resident Evil 6 doesn't disappoint like Resident Evil 5. From one Captivate trailer to another Capcom one, we have a new one for the next Devil May Cry game, which 
teaching the moment I didn't quite expect to see, or really wanted to. There's a naked Dante flying through the air with objects located just in the right spot, you know, as they usually always are, to cover his nakedness. All while he's getting dressed. Not a whole lot of the action side has happened during this trailer, but that seemingly Austin Powers-esque scene is probably enough for my mind to comprehend. Oh, and there is also apparently a religious news pundit that knows about Dante. Supposedly a lot of people do, and he wants to bring Dante down. Still no release date for the game, but let's just say October. Everything is coming out in October. With the anime for Persona 4 wrapping up over in Japan, people over here in the Western world have been wondering if when the anime comes out, Will we be getting the original voice cast from the version of the game? Well, yes, you shall be. This news was revealed recently, but though that was revealed, we don't have any idea when the English dub will actually be coming out over here. Strangely enough as well, or maybe it's not even that strange, when this was announced, the English dub cast actually was never even told about it. But luckily for them and for us, all of them were excited to reprise their roles. So everything is all fun and peasy right now, right? I haven't picked up Mass Effect 3 recently, but you might not know that there was a recent update and said update fixes the face import issue, as well as several other things, but the face import one is the most important one. At least they didn't take as long as I was expecting them to take, but this is still one of those strange things that ended up being overlooked by Bioware that I don't know how they could have overlooked. But hey, at least I can go back and play for my Shepard from Mass Effect 1, as I definitely wasn't willing to recreate them. I would only end up making them worse. It's no surprise that rumors are flooding around involving the next Grand Theft Auto game. Or if you're unlucky like me and you work in retail, then people will argue to death with you how they think said game is already released. And want to know where the Nintendo 3DS XL Lite is. The latest rumor, which comes from an online resume for one of the character animators for the game, states that the game will be coming out in October. That portion of the resume has subsequently been taken down. Some don't believe that this will likely be happening due to Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive, releasing Bioshock Infinite in October, so those two big games coming out at the same time wouldn't be good for them. Other websites have also been speculating that the game will actually be released in March next year. So in other words, no one still really knows, but we all like to speculate. It's hard to believe that a game in the Gears of War series actually ended up being cancelled. I thought that series just made money. No real info for this game was revealed, but we do know that it was being called Gears of War Exile. But we do have a few rumors, because like I just said, we simply love rumors. Those rumors involved that this game was going to use the Kinect and would be a sort of on-the-rail shooter. Reasons for cancellation of the game weren't revealed either, so we just have to speculate on that as well at this point. Perhaps if you have a fancy iOS device, you might have saw that there's a version of Mac devices right now. Similar to how Rockstar ported GTA 3 to mobile devices, they have decided to do this with Max Payne as well. Now don't worry Android device users like myself, you too will be able to be a pain to the max on April 26th. Both versions of the games are said to offer customized controls and high-res textures and graphics. My history with Shadowrun is very, very minimal, as in I maybe played about 30 minutes of it on the SNES, so my knowledge on the series isn't really all that much. All I know is that it's a fantasy game that's set in a futuristic sci-fi setting. Now, just at the end of last week, this return of Shadowrun has been funded, which is always good news, especially for certain fellow crew members that enjoy the series. Currently its funding is almost $100,000 away from getting to a million, and if the game gets to a million, 
they'll be adding another city they can run around in and get missions in. What city will it be? Well, it'll be up to the backers to decide. Now for those that haven't checked out the Kickstarter for Shadowrun Returns yet, here's a few things it's offering. Classic turn-based gameplay. It won't be a first-person shooter like the last one was. A deep interactive story. Contextual gameplay with four different realities. A level editor. And maybe, just maybe, a hot girl that turns into a dragon. That sure got my attention. Who doesn't possibly want to have a girlfriend? Till she decides to burn you. And with that, it brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. Now to be up to date on news in the gaming world, bookmark our website, defaultprime.com, and also subscribe to us here to be up to date on our videos, such as our previews, reviews, random let's play, indie game highlights, other prime cuts, and maybe other shenanigans. So as I always say, till next time gamers.